Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we're discussing the Cartier Tank MC Chronograph, a timepiece in stainless steel that's easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist because it has an aspect ratio that's rather short, stubby, chunky, and comfortable. And only 43.8 millimeters from lug to lug, I can recommend this watch for almost any wrist of any size. It's relatively slim at 11.7 millimeters thick with a rolled case flank that slides easily underneath the cuff and conventionally measured from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock without crown or chronograph pushers. It's 35.4 millimeters. Again, a universal size with a nice broad, albeit proprietary, 25.6 millimeter strap spacing. Now the timepiece is part of a series launched in 2013 with the specific anthracite dial model launched in 2014. All of stainless steel, you can see that it's equipped with with a strap that is drilled close to the case, no impediment to its movement. You can pull it straight down around a small wrist, which I happen to like. It's important to me that a watch fit well first. It can look great, but if it doesn't fit, it ruins the buzz. No buzz kill here. Flat strap, large rectangular scale alligator leather, a sort of anthracite gray to match the dial, folded edge and a monotone stitch. You can see it is more conventional calf skin on the underside, handmade in France. It is a Cartier factory strap. And since Cartier uses a buckle that is an homage to the original Louis Cartier 1909 deployant clasp, which was both Cartier's own design and the very first deployant clasp, you have a evocative shape, but also a smart mechanism. You can see how it's designed to crimp any excess length, and then once you put the other end of the strap through the buckle and lock it in place, it crimps and holds, which is why there are no holes in the strap. It crimps in place, it stops short, and then it holds fast, meaning since everything is hidden, all the excess length under the strap and the clasp, there's no external length visible flapping in the breeze, and there's no need for strap minders. It's stainless steel like the rest of the watch, and as you can see, it features a combination of polish and satin finish much like the watch. Now the watch features a relatively simple case. It's not the standard Cartier tank form. It looks a little bit like the tank anglaise and as you can see it has that sort of bulldog-like aspect ratio, short and thick, although at under 12 millimeters thick, it is objectively a thin watch. Now, the timepiece has rolled and polished edges, satin flanks, a little bit of an angularity to the end of its lug profile, and then the dial features a sort of rose lathe sun ray motif radiating out from the center. Stylized Roman numerals, as is Cartier's way along the hour track. You can see a watchmaker's four, and they're radially arrayed. There's the little secret signature, which is the signature of of Cartier inside the V of the Roman numeral 7. You could better see that rose lathe style stamped pattern on the dial. There are polished registers which feature a nice little twinkle and sparkle on the otherwise matte and satin finished dial. And then you have a combination, we may as well start things up, a combination of chronograph seconds, chronograph minutes and chronograph hours. The watch does not feature a constant second subdial. Fortunately, it does feature a vertical clutch, so if you just want to leave the chronograph running so you always have visible seconds on the dial, there is no additional hazard for doing so. Now, the movement also features a stop seconds function, so when I pull the crown, I stop the movement fast and I can set the watch against a reference time. And there is a quick set system for the date, so you can rapidly cycle should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. I should also mention that the same anthracite gray is used for the date disc, which is a smart aesthetic move by Cartier. A very handsome and classically Cartier dial with broad sword hands, elongated, and high polish. Turn it all over and you can see the movement that allows this watch to describe itself as manufacturer. You can see that the movement is known as the 1904 CHMC, all of which is to say it's Cartier nomenclature for a movement developed by Val Fleurier, which is Richemont's in-house movement specialist. It's a manufacturer that provides movements to less traditional manufacturers in the Richemont family, such as in some cases, Cartier, Piaget, and Panerai. Now here you have a movement that features 35 joules, automatic winding, ceramic rotor bearings for long wearing durability and high winding efficiency, a 28.8 beat rate, a 48 hour power reserve, stop seconds, a quick set date, and as you can see, 
a column wheel, so there's a crisp traditional actuation. This is the premium way to build a chronograph with a column wheel. It feels better, it sounds better than a cam system. And with the vertical clutch, you're able to start the watch without any discernible jump or stagger to the chronograph seconds hand. You're also able, because of the vertical clutch, to leave the system running on a full-time basis with no additional wear, tear, or hazard to the movement. The watch is minimally water resistant at 30 meters, so though it has a sporty appearance in stainless steel, nevertheless, it is more of a sports casual watch than a true sports watch, but then again, you've got a water resistant Cartier Santos or Calibre de Cartier diver for that, right? Of course you do. You can fill out your collection of contemporary Cartier with this Cartier Tank MC Chronograph on the watch box.